So a few days ago for Christmas, my wife got me an Arcos tablet, uh, the Arcos um, 7 internet tablet with a 250 uh, gig hard drive. And uh, the reason she picked that one out for me is because it allows you to easily do double boot, dual boot uh, other operating systems uh, such as Debian. Um, and there is, if you uh, want to just boot into Debian, uh, just go here to debian-arcos.com. All the information you need is there. They have an image ready for you to use, um, which we may look into in more future tutorials. Um, but I want to create an image from you know just the, the default Debian install. Uh, so that's what we're going to go over today. I've never really I've played with uh, ARM uh, images before on my cell phone, uh, but I've never created my own Debian. ARM image uh, up until this week, and I've spent the last like week pretty much about four or five days now fixing it, trying to get it just right. There's a pretty good guide at this Arcos uh, Debian website or Debian-Arcos.com, um, but I found a few problems with it, and I also did a few things differently just because um, I know other ways to do them, and I, I prefer my ways. Um, first thing you need to do, though, I'm not going to really go over this in the tutorial uh, too much, but uh, you have to install a new bootloader for your device um, so that you can dual boot into the the uh, second image. Um, there are directions at Debian Arcos on basically telling you to go here to the Arcos site, click on support, download, scroll down to their special developer edition firmware and just read there on how to install that on your device. It's really simple. Uh, basically you plug in your USB, hold down the volume and power button when you turn it on um, and then you choose upgrade firmware and you just drag and drop the file over to the device. You don't need any special software like you do with a lot of devices to flash it. You just drag that over, it flashes it, and then you have uh, their version of Linux. I forget what it's called off the top of my head. Uh, they are basically we're going to replace that image that installs with our Debian image once we create it. Now, uh, going back to the Debian-Arcos website, if we go to wiki here, and the main developers on this site are French, so everything comes up in French by default, but you can choose English. And it's relatively, it, it, the translation isn't perfect, but you can get through it. Um, and then, but when you install their image on your device, it's going to be uh, French by default. And uh, it takes a little, they have directions on how to change it over to English and all that stuff, which I might do in a future tutorial as well. I'm talking kind of fast because we got a lot to go over and just a little bit of time to do it. Um, and this is a lot of this is just going to be doing a Debian install. Uh, so I'm going to kind of cut out the parts where we're downloading files and stuff. So if you see cuts in the videos, that's what it is. So uh, here we go. We're going to use uh, QMU, uh, which allows us, it's basically, it's like VirtualBox. Actually, VirtualBox is based on it. Um, and it allows you to uh, basically run a virtual machine, but of different architectures. So uh, I'm using Linux Mint on my desktop here, but uh, this should be fairly the same on all Linux systems and I'm going to use aptitude to install but use whatever package manager you want uh, I'm going to sudo aptitude install QM not just QMU but QMU dash system and that will install the packages you need for different architectures I already have that installed but go ahead you can do that or use whatever package manager you prefer okay once that's installed uh, this is where it starts getting fun and we actually start doing something um, first thing we need to do uh, is create a, a empty Debian image. Now, uh, this is one of the things I do a little bit different. Uh, my way is a little bit faster all, than uh, what they have here, but this way works as well. They tell you to use DD to create an image. doesn't take too long. We want to create an image that's uh, less than 4 gigs because by default the um, partition on the Arcos is a fat partition, so you can't have files larger than 4 gigs. Um, unless you reformat it as an EXT format, which you can do, uh, and I recommend it. But just in case you don't, we're going to start off, and instead of using DD, I'm going to use a uh, part of the QMU package. So we're going to type in QMU-IMG for image, and we're going to create a file called Debian.IMG, and we're going to say it's 3.5 gigs. Now the reason I picked 3.5 and boom, it's already made. Um, the reason I picked 3.5, like I said, you don't want to go over 4 and what, when I did it before is 4. It was, it's still different devices to calculate different uh, bytes and bits differently and so it wasn't exactly 4 gigs on the device and so it was too big and it's 
Not hard to expand an image, but I haven't had any luck shrinking an image and keeping things working. So we're going to go a little low here, and that's fine. You can always make it bigger later if you want. Next thing we need to do, if we look at, um, oh, you know what? <laughs> I should probably make a directory to work in here. So I'm going to just make a directory, and I'm going to call it um, Arcos. And I'm going to move into that Arcos. And I'll just run that command again and create an image. And right now we have an image in there that's empty. That's three and a half gigs. Um, next, uh, they tell you here in the tutorial to uh, go to this link and download this file and this file. Issues I had with that is this version of the file here would not detect the virtual disk. It said there's no hard drive. Tried this older one here, and it wouldn't detect the network. Um, and as far as these two files here, choosing one or the other, we don't even need to download that because we're going to grab it from the install after we do the install. You'll see what I mean later on, uh, probably in the second part of the tutorial, because I bet it's going to take me more than 15 minutes to do this. Um, so I spent forever trying to figure out how to do this. I went and got another um, a daily build. So I got a version of Debian from their daily builds from the Debian site that uh, was a three point uh, whatever uh, kernel. Well, and then I had the issue of, well, then I don't have this file right here. And once again, I sh I'm going to show you how to grab that from your install once you do the install. But I, it took me forever to find an image that worked, and then I finally realized that this image right here is the same as the one on the link, but it actually works. So that's what we're going to download. I'm going to right-click this. I'm going to say copy link, and then I'm going to say wget, and I'll paste in that link. Should not take very long, very small. And we also need this file here. We're going to copy that link, and I'm going to have all this in the notes in the description, so be sure to check out the links in the description. And we'll wget that file. Or you can right-click and download it to the folder, however you'd like to do it. But uh, I'm just doing it from the command line. Uh, that way you can throw it into a script later on. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to do is this long command here. I'm just going to copy it. I'll paste it in, and we'll look over what it says. Basically, we're starting up QMU, but we're using it as an ARM system, which is a different type of processor, which is on most mobile devices. That way you can't just. That's why you can't just do this install on your desktop computer, because the processor is a different architecture. The M is the type of machine, versatile uh, PB. I really, I mean, that's just saying what type of machine it is. I don't know what other options there are there. Next, we're going to say the kernel, which is the file we just downloaded. This dot slash right here is just saying it's in the current directory. You actually don't need that. Next, we're going to do the uh, uh, initial RD. I probably should have looked up what that meant, but that's also the file we just downloaded. And then it's going to say, oh, what hard drive do you want to use? Well, we're going to use the image we just created. We're going to say that this device, this virtual machine, has 256 megabytes of RAM. You can give it more, but that's how much the actual device, at least the device I have, has. And then we're going to append a root drive, which is going to be a, a basically a, a RAM device, um, which basically is going to work as the root drive, but it's going to be in a virtual RAM in our virtual machine. We'll go ahead and hit enter there. And as you can see, it's booting up in here. You're going to notice it's going to look almost identical to what you would install on your desktop. Um, and I'm just going to pick the default options here because I, I speak English. I live in the United States. Use that key mapping. Um, so basically, from this point on, we're pretty much doing a regular Debian install. We're just doing it as an ARM architecture in a virtual machine. Choose where you want to download from and any proxy servers. And now it's going to start downloading components it needs to do the install. This is where I might cut the video. Um, but I might take this moment just to talk for a minute um, about different architectures. Uh, in case you, you're kind of new to this, um, and I'm not a professional on it myself, as I was saying, your desktop computer, there's different types of processors. Anytime you compile a program, you like in C or C++, that's a binary program, you need to compile it for the type of architecture it's going to run on. Um, so the type of processor. Most desktops run what's called an x86, because it can be a 386, 686, a 486. The x is just a representation of a different number, but they're all something 86. Um, and feel free to leave a comment if you... I, 
don't really know what the, the number means. <laughs> other than, yeah, other than that's the type of processor. Now, when you run your regular desktop, you either have a 32-bit or a 64-bit um, operating system, um, but it's still most likely an x86. It's an x86 32-bit or an x86 uh, 64-bit. And although you can compile programs for 32-bit or 64-bit, um, most of the time you'll have a compatibility later where compatibility layer where um, the 32-bit programs will run on a 64 bits and a 64-bit will run on the 32 just as long as you have that compat compatibility layer. Um, right here I'm going to set a root password. I'm just going to say Debian. You can always change it later but I'm just doing that for this default uh, install because I'm probably going to share this image with you guys so you can download it if you'd like. I'm going to create a user called Debian and I'm going to set their password to Debian. Now, obviously, especially if you're going to set up an SSH. Oh, I must have typed one of the passwords wrong. Uh, user password, Debian, Debian. Obviously, for security reasons, you're going to want to change that after you install the image for both the root and the regular user. Um, so, yeah, and then most mobile devices, cell phones, your cable box, all these things run what's called an ARM processor. Um, well, most of them will run an ARM processor. Um, now, when you're compiling a program, usually things like uh, GCC or G++ will let you cross-compile. Um, so if you wrote one program, you can cross-compile it. Like, let's say you're running on a Linux system. You can cross-compile it for, for at least different operating systems. You can compile it for Windows or, or Mac or Linux um, or, or BSD. Um, and I think you could probably cross-compile it for other architectures. Actually, I'm not really sure on that. I, I'm mostly a scripting guy. If you watch my videos, I do Bash and Python tutorials. Um, so someone can comment on, comment on that below if you'd like. Um, but a lot of times, if you're going to be cross-compiling and testing out operating systems that are for other architectures, you're going to want to do it in a virtual machine like this. It's a lot easier than actually doing it on the device. Um, although you can compile stuff on the device once you have Debian installed. Um, so yeah, uh, that's one of the great things about open source in general, is that really most programs, unless they're very low level, um, actually even very low level stuff as far as architectures, if you write a program in C or C++, you should be able to recompile it for any operate or any, um, processor architecture. Um, but with closed source stuff, uh, you don't have the source code, so if the creator doesn't want to compile it for a different architecture, you're not going to have that. But with open source, that's why when you install Debian, everything in the repository should run on ARM architecture because they're all been compiled for ARM as well as your x86. Um, that's why you can run Linux on a cable box, a cell phone, but you can't just take regular Windows and just throw it on another machine uh, and have it run natively um, because it's not compiled for an ARM architecture. Uh, and that's up to Microsoft. Obviously they could if they wanted to and they do have Windows Mobile but it's not quite the same and it's just I don't want to get into the whole politics of this stuff but you can compile something for different architectures using a virtual machine like this. That's what I'm saying. Now it's going to be down downloading a lot of stuff and I'm getting close to my time limit here so I'm going to stop recording and be sure to check out the next video. Hopefully there'll be a annotation somewhere. Uh, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris of the K. And there's links in the description to, I know I'm going kind of fast. That's because there's a lot to get done. But all the stuff I'm typing, there'll be information on it in the links in the description. Thank you very much and have a great day and watch the second tutorial.